In this active tip, we're going to talk about how you can link sounds to objects. As you play with sounds in Inspire, you might find that you want the objects to play the sounds. So in this case, we have three objects here, and each one plays a sound. Un cerf volant. Des crayons. Hello, je suis Paul. Oh, hello, Paul. It seems your voice has dropped. Hello, je suis Paul. So how do we do this? How do we link these sounds to these objects? The first thing is you got to have a sound on your computer. Now you can get a sound off the internet, off a CD, an already created MP3. But in this active tip, I'm going to show you how you can do it by using a sound that you create in Inspire. Now the first thing is make sure that you go into your settings under recordings and for sound recorder you have it set to save to disk. We talked about this in a previous active tip but you want it to save it to your disk so it doesn't put the sound straight onto your flip chart page. So now we're going to go to this next page. And we want this guy to say a sound when I click on him. So the first thing I need to do is record that sound. So I'm going to go to my recorder, I'm going to hit record, now I'm recording my sound. This is my boy on the playground, and we're going to talk about how I love using the sound recorder in Active Inspire. I'm going to stop recording. I need to give this a name, sound file, and then make sure that you end .wav. That gives it a nice extension, and it works very well within Active Inspire. And so now, to get this guy to play the sound, it's just as easy as setting an action, which we've done in previous active tips as well. So if I go to my action browser, I go to open document, file, or sound. I then need to pick that file that I want. I just go over to my desktop. I have the folder called active sound, and I go to the sound file.wav that I chose right there. Click on open. Now the last thing, I always forget this, go to apply changes. If you don't click on apply changes, it's not going to work. And then right here I have some choices. Do I want it to store it externally? I think it's always good to store it with the flip chart because this way it saves it with the flip chart. And so if I give this file to you, you don't need to have that sound file as well. It saves together. I could have it autoplay. I could have it loop. There's a lot of options on here. Feel free to knock yourself out and try them all. And so now it's an action, so when I click on him, and now I'm recording my sound. This is my boy on the playground, and I can see that it works. Now you can also link sound to a text field. This is a very, another very cool way to use sounds in your voice or your student's voice in a lesson. So here you'll see we have made each stanza of the poem a separate item, and each one in Flanders fields has a recording low between the crosses row on row that mark our place in Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses so imagine having your students record their own voices to really bring that personal connection or have them take you know self ownership of the lesson i hope you enjoyed this short active tip on ways you can add sounds to objects in your flip charts enjoy <laughs>